insurance. Why do we have to have insurance? It's this peace of mind that people have to know everything's going to be okay if it's not okay. Right? If I have an accident, I need to know that I'm covered. I need to know that if I hit somebody, my protection will cover them or vice versa. It's just this mindset or, you know, a lot of these are, you know, life insurance things where, you know, you need to make sure that, that when you go from this world to be with the Lord, that your family is going to be taken care of. And those are smart things, right? We, Jamie, you've done this for, for your life, I mean, a lot of your life, and it's a smart thing. It's a very mature thing to do, right? It's when you know you've arrived in adulthood when you've gotten life insurance on yourself. I, I say that because I think everybody is wanting that assurance. They just want to know that they're going to be okay. You want to know that they're, they're going to be taken care of, right? They want to know that their spouse is going to be taken care of. They want to know that their kids are going to be taken care of. And we are so worried and caught up about protecting the things of this world and we don't really think about eternity. The rest of your existence. You're on earth, you want to make sure you're taken care of, but I'll deal with heaven when I get there. Careful. So I want to do some things today. I want in verse in, in verses eight through sixteen of, of Romans eight, which is arguably the greatest chapter in all the Bible, and it's argued that way, and it's just so rich and so deep. And we've been going slow, and we'll take a little more, but I think it's kind of going back over what we've already covered. But I, I just want us to, to to really dive in theological and uh, theologically, and I also want us to feel God's love. We can do that through the scriptures, okay? And I, I want you to feel the, this. I want you to, as how many of you guys are parents in here? Grandparents, right? I, you want the, just like insurance, you want the best for your kids. You want the best for your, your loving kids. Not because they worked hard or not because they did what you told them to do, but, but just because they're them and you, that you love them and you created them and they're great and it's, 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 you know, it's the greatest thing to know that your loved ones are taken care of. This is the message that I feel that God is giving us through the text this morning. I need you to know I love you. I need you to know that you're gonna be okay. I need you to know that, that I'm your dad. So let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for this congregation, this family. We thank you, Lord, for the, the, the youth trip and, and the experiences and the lifetime memories that they've made and maybe lifetime friendships that they've developed. And Lord, we just pray that they take that trip and, Lord, they, they move closer to you. They grow in their relationship. They grow in their faith. God, I pray over the hearts of everyone in this room, Lord, that they're conditioned to receive your word this morning, that the words that are spoken this morning are clear and true and understandable, and Lord, that they do not return void. They are your words. Conviction of the Holy Spirit flow in this place like a mighty river. Anoint from on high. Discerning spirits. Every person in this room, Lord, I pray for their discerning spirit to to be on full alert, put full alarm. And Lord, our prayer is as it is every week, that as we learn more about you, we fall more in love with you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. So I always say this verse. This is 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You, you, I hear that, yeah, I say that all the time. Do you not know that your tabernacle and Christ lives in you? It's the way that I say that. Um, but this is a part I don't ever really say, and it's just as important for you were 
bought at a price. Therefore, glorified God in your body. I, I, I think it's important to see this because a lot of you are thinking, well, if God's my, my, my dad, if he's father, and I'm a child of God, why is he buying me? It seems elementary, it seems weird, right? Well, if you go to Hosea, the book of Hosea, you remember Gomer, right? And Hosea, and that's a whole thing there. But he, his wife goes away and goes into this, what is there young years in here? Okay, goes into promiscual activities. There we go. And goes into slavery in that. Hosea has to go find his wife in a very bad situation where she is sold into sex slavery or she is in that line of work and she has to be bought from her husband, which he is all right, rightfully hers, in, uh, she is his anyway, right? Like when I married Melissa, me and two, the, two flesh, the flesh became one, right? I am hers and she is mine and we love each other. That's the way it's supposed to work, right? But yet she has been sold into that and now he has to go retrieve what was already his. See the language in that. We are already gods. But yet when Adam ate the fruit and the sin process began, we were separated from God. We were set into sin. We have the sinful nature of Adam in us. And so when we have the sinful nature of Adam in us, God has to go and retrieve what was already his with a price. He bought it for the wages of sin is death, right? That death was Jesus Christ on the cross and the shedding of his blood was just sufficient for you. So therefore, we are to glorify God in our bodies. Here is Romans 8, 8. Those who are in flesh or in the flesh cannot please God. What are we supposed to do? Glorify God in your body. We cannot glorify God in our body if we're living in sin, if we're living in the flesh. And you think immediately you go to drugs or, or alcohol or you, you go to uh, addictions or some kind of way out there. But let's, let's bring it closer to home. What if, it's, what if it's not those things? What if it's murmuring and complaining about your job? What if, about, if it's about you constantly are pushing the bus buttons on your spouse or your kids just to get them angry, to get them upset? Or maybe you just belittle or talk down to people. Are you doing those things? Or maybe you're just, you know, you're a sailor half the time and you love colorful language. What if it's these things? What if it's your rage and your anger? What if it's your pride? What if it's your arrogance? What if it's these things and not deep, dark addiction or, or, or alcoholism? Or what, if, what if it's something that you deal with? Make it personal to you. What is in your life that you know good and well doesn't need to be there? Just doesn't need to be there. It's like, I, I know this is something between that's keeping, that, that, that is this, this thing that God's asked me to get rid of, and I just can't do it. I, that thing. Verse 9, how, if you, however, are not in the flesh. What are you in? Spirit. We've got to know these things. Okay? You are not in the, in the flesh because you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that your tabernacle in Christ lives in you? Right? So you live now in this flesh. Biggest words in the Bible are if and but. Those are important. And so we see this. You are not in the flesh but in the spirit since 
The Spirit of God, capital S there, that is the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. Just like 1 Corinthians. But if, right, that, that, that if there, anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Like, Dad, hear, 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 hear God saying this to you. And the Paul, writing of Paul, I need you to know these things. This is really important stuff. I need you to know. I need you to know that we don't live this way, we live this way. I had this, this conversation with my kids. Like, there was an uh, issue come up, and, and I talked to my, my son, and he's like, well, I did this, and I, uh, you know, I was mad, and I, was, I said, well, okay, I understand, but Bristol's don't do that. Bristol's don't do that. We, we come at it at a different way. We come at it at a place of love and not anger and not flesh and not, not no. We are held to living in a, a place of this is what we're called to do. And it's important that we live that way. But if anyone does not live in the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. I need you to know that. Now, as if Christ is in you, which if you accept that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. And the Holy Spirit is now indwelling in your spirit. Now Christ lives in you, right? The body is dead because of sin. The body's dead because of sin. Thank you. Because this thing is wearing out quick. Right? Daily. Getting worse and worse. Right? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? This dude's not going to make it. But it's not necessarily that. It's just the knowing that the flesh, which is another term for the body, and the desires of the body are dead. Right? The desires of the body. Like the things that, that you come up and you say, man, I could really, I could really go and do this thing. I could really go and do this thing, whether it's drinking or whether it's or drugs or whether it's, again, like I talked about earlier, it's those things that are more closer to home for you maybe. Maybe you deal with those things like drugs and alcohol. And I know there's people in this, in this bu building that do, and I'm not making light of that at all, but everybody has their own things that, that are keeping them from a closer walk with the Lord. But are you... Are you dealing with them? Christ says, I die daily. You're supposed to die daily. You pick up your cross and, and follow him. But the Spirit, which is again capital S there, the Holy Spirit is life because of righteousness. Whose righteousness, might I ask? Who makes you righteous? Who makes you in right standing with the Father? Jesus. Jesus. We got, we got to know that, right? And that's what he's saying. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is life. And it's important that we see that because remember Jesus, and, and I, I love this, this, uh, this to passage, but I, I, it's so con convicting to me. And he's, he's up there with his disciples and they're having this conversation. And, and Jesus, I can't imagine having him this close to me. Being able to shake his hand, being able to wrap my arm around his shoulders, and him look me in the eyes and say, Russ, I got to go. I got to go because if I go, there's going to be a comforter that is greater than me. Greater than you? Jesus, you raise people from the dead. You, you walk on water. You feed multitudes. You cure lepers. You cure blind. You, you, what do you mean better than you? I got to go. Because I don't want to just be with you. I want to be in you. That's a big deal. I don't want to just be eye to eye with you. I want to be in your heart. I want to be 
inside their tabernacle. And then he continues, he says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, which is exactly what we've been talking about, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies back to life through his spirit who lives in you. Again, that's Thessalonians. That's, that's others. You know, to be asking for the body, to be in the presence of the Lord, he'll raise your mortal body, right? And he continues, he says, so then, brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. We're not obligated, we're not, you don't have to listen to him anymore. That's a, that's a big deal. Some of us have not figured that out, that when our flesh says, you should go do this, that we can say no. I have that problem around food. I say, I want that. My flesh says, I should go get that. My spirit should say no. And I should listen. I'm making light of that, but that's, that's a scenario that we can go through on a lot of different situations in our life. I want this thing. I'm going to go buy it. Mm, is it going to help you? Is it going to glorify God? Is it going, to, um, is, is it going to, to make your walk better? Is it going to do anything for you spiritually, or is it going to make it worse for you? Again, I, we hear this all the time, you know, that Garth Brooks song, Sometimes I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. Hate that song. Answer that. hate that song. You know why? It's just theologically wrong. God, does, God answers prayers. You just not, not like the answer. It's not yes all the time. Or it's not no all the time. Sometimes it's just wait. Hate that one. But he, he answers prayers in his time. Right? But we got to be sensitive and we got to live in the flesh and we can't be obligated to the flesh anymore and do the desires of the flesh and the things that the flesh is calling us and wanting us to do. We can say no. For if you live according to the flesh, what? You're going to die. Like you can hear your dad saying that to you. Right? Like your, your father and saying, listen, I need you to know that. If you keep going this way, it's going to be bad. It's not going to be good. Listen to me. You need to know, if you keep going down this path, it's broad and leads to destruction. You, you need to know that. But, again, the biggest words in the Bible... If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, the flesh, the desires of the flesh, right, you will live. Why? Sin doesn't make you bad. It makes you dead. It makes you dead. This is not about making a better life for yourself. This is not about you getting a life coach and giving you five PowerPoint presentations about how you should be more motivated, how you, <coughs> excuse me, you should be a better person, how you should do this or do that or not do this and not do that. This is life and death. If you needed a life coach, well, Jesus didn't need to die. You needed a Savior. You needed someone to save you. Because the body was going to kill you. The flesh was going to kill you. Because the only way it could work is to be reconciled back to the Father. So all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Hear that. Hear that language, God's sons. And I love this verse. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. I know you guys have heard Abba, Father. 
and here's it's father father but it, uh, it's a different meaning in in the in, in the greek it's it's this beautiful idea of of daddy some of you guys have had wonderful fathers and father figures in your life and one of the great joys of my life is not hearing my kids say father if they say father something's wrong but right who who says that mother or father if you do and you're th- th- that's fine but you're weird what do we say daddy I need my daddy. I need him. I had this conversation with one of the coaches. and it just, So I, I'm one of those weird dads, and I don't care. And that's why I'm so involved with the sports in Goldthwait. But it's, I was at seventh grade practice, and I'm getting ready to do it again with Drew. Every day they had early morning practice right right before school, 7 o'clock in the morning, they were out there, and they were practicing, and they were full pads and going, and I'm out there, I know um, Garza was out there with me, and we, were, we just sat in the truck, and I just watch. I go out in the bleachers, and I drink my coffee, and I just watch them practice. I was, one of, again, me, it was just me or Garza, or it was just a select few people, and, and you know, one of the conversation came up with one of the coaches, and it's like, why do you do that? We got them. They're safe. They're not going to. I said, no, no, no. It's, it has nothing to do with you or your coaching. And y'all are great coaches. And I love every one of y'all. Y'all are great coaching staff. It's that thought of my son being able to look over there and see his daddy. That's it. Just that wonderful assurance to know my daddy's watching me. I love that. Not that I'm the best dad in the world. Not that I'm, I believe me, I've made plenty of mistakes. But one of the greatest things that I have and the flexibility that y'all have allowed me to have and to be with my kids is one of the great, great joys and loves of my life to know that I can always be with my kids. And my kids know there's daddy. There's daddy. Some of you guys have not gotten to experience that relationship with your father, whether they were distant, whether they were just, uh, you know, worked hard or whatever else. And, uh, you know, praise God. But I, I pray that you feel that in the text this morning. I, I need you to know, son, don't fall back into this. I'm your daddy. I need you to know, daughter, don't go back to this whole life that you had. Don't go back into these old things and this old way of life. I need you to know I'm your daddy, and I love you. It's a big deal. And guys, we don't need to lose that childlike faith. And I want to, I've said this before, but I think it's important. My sons are getting older and bigger. My son, oldest son, is actually taller than I am now, and it's really hard to deal with. But um, I remember when I was a kid. I was young, like younger than this little guy here, this little guy here, and I was on a diving board. You guys have experienced that, right, Patrick? You guys have experienced that. All you guys, and you're on the, and there's Daddy. Jump, son. Didn't hesitate. Didn't think about it at all. There's my daddy. He said, go. Right? I went to the water park with my my dad last week. Okay? I'm I'm 6'3", 255 pounds. Right? If I go to that diving board now, and I see my little 65-year-old daddy down there, and he says, jump. I'm hesitating. <laughs> it's not going to end well for him. Why? I've gotten too big. I've gotten too smart. 
I've gotten more common sense. More importantly, I've lost trust that my dad can do the things that he used to do when I was a lot smaller. But I think we do that with God, too. God, I'm, I'm too big for this now. God, I'm, I'm too smart for this. I'm, I, I, more importantly, God, I don't trust that you can do what I need you to do. I need you to find that, that small voice, that kid voice, and say, Daddy, if you're telling me to go, if you're telling me to jump, I know you'll catch me. I know you'll have me. I love that verse. Last verse of the morning. Bodhi, you guys can come on up. For the Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit. Hear this. Hear this. There's a meshing going on. You got your spirit. You got the Holy Spirit. And they're meshing together. They're meshing together. They're testifying together with our spirit that we are God's children. That is what we need to know. There's that blessed assurance of knowing that we're adopted into him, that he is our father, that he is more importantly, he's our daddy. And his spirit and our spirit are connected and will forever be connected. And there's this beautiful thing. No matter how old he gets or no matter how big he gets, I'm always going to be his daddy. And he knows that in his spirit. He knows that in his mind. He knows that with every being of himself. You have to know that with God. That's that's my daddy. I'm his child. We're together. We're one. Wherever I go, he goes. I'm a child of God. So sweet to know that. You've heard this scripture before. This is the fruits of the Spirit, right? And it's love and it's joy and it's peace and it's patience and it's kindness and it's goodness and it's faithfulness and it's gentleness and it's self-control against these things. There is no law, but you may not remember this last verse. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. You have lost them. You are now a child of God and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Free indeed to live in this wonderful place. I'll tell you this and I'll, I'll quit, but you know what really affects my relationship with my son? It's Number one, it's, it's, it's me a lot. I'll, I'll admit that. But it's one of those things like them not doing what I asked them to do. Hey, I need you to do this. And they don't do it, right? And then you go back and say, hey, really, I need you to do this. And then they don't do it. And then there's that voice that raises, hey, dude, do this, Right? Y'all know, y'all know, y'all live it. That, that affects our relationship. Is, is them not doing what they've been asked to do. But also, you know, the thing is, is when my son, and we, I hate liars, but when my son says something that's just not true, just not true. And what it boils down to is it's, there's a trust that's been broken. It's just, it's just broken trust. Hey, I, I, you said this and it's wrong. And you know it's wrong. And sadly, you know what? I'm not a perfect dad. There's things that I said that probably aren't true. And it's hurt them. And it's like, you know what, dad? That's, that's just not true. But you know how that can be fixed? just talking just talking just through prayer just through you know a a wrapping around and hugging of your kid hey I love you you're my son and I'm your dad it's a sweet place 
How much more so is it like that with us and Abba Father? There's going to be some great things in heaven. There's going to be some great things in heaven. We're going to get to see Jesus. We're going to get to see Jesus. And we're going to see God. We're going to get to call him Daddy. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this.